What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 video. So, as of the time that I'm recording this, it is, what, April 28th? Which means we are in Regulation C. We are almost a full month into the Regulation C format, and I wanted to take today's video to discuss the fall of Pokemon that we used to see used in competitive before the uh, Paradox, before the Ruins dropped. Honestly, I think the Paradox dropping was more influential than the Ruins dropping. However, the Ruins did actually ruin some Pokemon's usage. So we're going to talk about the day. We're going to talk about the Pokemon that fell off. Five of them that I think actually need to be recognized for the niches that they filled. And we'll explain why we really no longer see them. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this same point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content and answer my comment question of the day, which is, which Pokemon do you miss the most? Anyways, let's get into it. So, first one on my list, a Pokemon that I think fell off quite a bit, Skeledurge. So, Skeledurge saw usage for uh, a few different things. At the beginning of the game's release, uh, prior to Series 2, or still playing Series 1, Skeledurge was actually really nice because it was able to be like a really bulky Pokemon, base 104 HP, 100 defense, 75 special defense, and like a really decent special attack set at 110 that would be boosted uh, every time it went for a Torch Song. Like, it was a good Pokemon. You would also tend to see like Will-O-Wisp on it, Shadow Ball, and then usually like Protect, and I, I saw Citrus Berry quite a bit, uh, but sometimes you would even see like Leftovers. Basically, you would build this to be a fat Pokemon, and it would take advantage of the ability Unaware. So, Unaware is an ability that ignores the other Pokemon's stat changes when it's doing or taking damage. So, the reason this was useful is because of, specifically, Don Dozo. <laughs> so, Don Dozo, at the beginning of the game, would run a very standard moveset of Order Up, Wave Crash, and Earthquake. Now, Order Up was usually not a stab move, and the Terra types that would run at the beginning of the game were either Grass, Steel, or Dragon, really. And we don't really see that change too much nowadays, except, you know, if it were if it were running like Terra Grass nowadays, you actually do see Terra Blast to beat Palafin. Uh, but yeah, so Skeledurge was able to take on Dondozo because Dondozo, in an unaware, or ignore other Pokemon's stat changes uh, when, you know, dealing or receiving damage, just like Skeledurge. But Skeledurge would always win in this 1v1 if it would burn its Terra. Skeledurge would almost always run Terra Grass for the Amoongus immunity, and because it could, one, burn the Don Dozo, and failing that, if it were Terra Steel, you Torch Song into it, bypassing any substitutes because it's a sound-based move, and just remove it from the game. Or, if you were facing a non-Terra Don Dozo, you would still Terra Grass to avoid getting one shot, or actually probably two shot by Wave Crash, depending on how you built this guy, because you are ignoring its stat boosts. Um, and then just KO it with Shadow Ball, because Dondozo's special defense stat was actually super low, 65, like at plus two with 150 base HP. Even then, it's still taking like a lot from unboosted moves, like, you know, Moonblast from Monst Fluttermane. So Skeledurge was actually sort of a soft check to Dondozo. You would throw it onto your team. If you didn't have to burn a Terra earlier in the game, you'd reserve the Terra for this thing and just annihilate it. Other things it did pretty well into, Amoongus was a Pokemon it could beat uh, pretty straight on. Um, what else did we really see it face against? I remember King Gambit was actually like fairly used. Uh, it was still like used early on in the game, uh, even before we figured out it's like one of the best Pokemon ever. But we would use it to beat King Gambit because Torch Song does really well into it, and you could tear away the Dark Weakness. Even then, Kowtow Cleave coming off a base 135 attack, you're a Skeletor. You have 104 HP, 100 defense. You can eat that hit pretty well. Uh, and another Pokemon that we actually didn't see quite as much at the beginning was Tyranitar. I think Tyranitar actually picked up a lot more in Series 2 and towards the end of Series 1. So at the beginning of Series 1, Skeledurge was pretty useful and it was able to take on this Pokemon very easily. Meowskarata was another Pokemon that it was able to take on because Meowskarata was quite common. Uh, and while it did have access to stuff like Knock Off, for the most part, it would either be like, not Life Orb, what am I saying? It would be like a Focus Sash set with Overgrow and like U-Turn, Flower Trick. Uh, I think it ran Knock Off at the beginning. It, sometimes it wouldn't actually. It would run like Sucker Punch actually, more often than not, and like Protect. And if you were running like the Choice Band set, then you would actually swap off for Knock Off occasionally. And you would Choice Band and give it Protean. So yeah. 
Uh, so basically, Skeledurge was able to deal with that pretty well because it resisted every move that it would go for other than these dark moves. Dark moves, if you could scout for it, you would just go ahead and tear away the weakness and deal with it. And even then, even though it's like a really, you know, decently strong attack uh, coming off of base 110, because you're so bulky, you could always live the hit and then just hit it back with Torch Song. So Don Dozo, or not Don Dozo, Skeledurge is able to uh, match it pretty well into the entire format in that way. So yeah, Skeledurge. Definitely going to be uh, my my number five slot. I, I want to try to use Skeledurge. I want to try to find a way to use it. But I feel like the reason it's hard to use is because of the existence of Fluttermane. Fluttermane nowadays makes it... Well, I guess it's Fluttermane and Golden Go. Those are like the two best ghost types. And if you're like... At least on the special side. If you're in like a physical ghost, it's going to be like Annihilate, Sarah Ledge. Or even nowadays, you'll uh, see Dragapult. But as far as like the special ghost types go... You get more value out of these guys, and not only is it competing for a ghost type slot on team, uh, on teams, but it's also competing for a fire type slot, which Arcanine is undoubtedly the single best fire type in the format, and other fire types like Volcarona just offer more utility. So Skeledurge, it's not completely useless, but it is almost certainly a Pokemon that you have to go out of your way to find a team that it fits on, which I've been trying to do forever, and it's very difficult. So yeah, Skeledurge definitely going to be my number five slot. My uh, number four slot is actually going to be a Pokemon that we saw like a decent amount of usage when the game first dropped, but once again fell off Grimmsnarl. And this one's surprising because Grimmsnarl, I feel like you guys still face it. And that's because Grimmsnarl isn't the worst Pokemon ever. But if we're taking like a look at its usage now, uh, it is a, a shadow of what it used to be. At 2% usage, it is below Ledge and above Farigarath. I think that Grimmsnarl actually isn't as good as it used to be because of just how common uh, its checks are. So it's it's like a dark and fairy type, which used to be a fairly good uh, typing to go into or to like use in a Pokemon. But nowadays you have to deal with Golden Go, you have to deal with Fluttermane. I like how Golden Go and Fluttermane were like my last two examples. Uh, but not only that, uh, King Gambit is also like really, really, really good and it's able to bypass um, not bypass, but like it's able to not really care about Grimmsnarl's defenses because you don't want to burn a Terra on Grimmsnarl, if we're being honest. Grimmsnarl is not the Pokemon you want to Terra. It is the Pokemon that you want to throw a light, not light ball, light clay on. And you want to go for your light screen, your reflect, you want to go for your thunder wave, and I don't know, your last move is usually always spirit break. But yeah. And even then, like this is a buffed Grimmsnarl that is no longer seeing usage. It got access to parting shot. That's huge. That's like a really good tool, but Parting Shot can't save it because it's hard to fit onto a move set. You would have to drop Thunder Wave because you still want, you know, an offensive move. And yeah, if you see if you see Grimstar nowadays, it actually isn't even usually like dual screens. Usually it's like Fake Out, Spirit Break, um, Thunder Wave, and not Parting Shot, but usually like some other utility move. I've seen Fake Tears a few times. Fake Tears is quite good. Uh, I've seen Trick. There are just different moves that you run on it. Like, if we look at the usage stats on it, Reflect and Light Screen, while it is, like, really high usage on Ladder, like, the reason that you don't run this set on Grimmsnarl, like, as often as, like, you would expect it to is because as, like, the format developed, people found out that Klefki can kind of do what Grimmsnarl wants to do without having to double down on Dark types. So I, I guess another reason that Grimmsnarl, like, sort of fell off was because... There are a lot of really good dark types. It is competing for a dark type slot. And while we do have Terra, you don't want to like waste it on the Grimstar. Like dark types are really good. Look at all the dark types we have that are usable in this format. We have Brute Bonnet, Chen Pao, Chi Yu, uh, Grimstar itself, obviously. Uh, we have Iron Jugulus, which still sees usage. We have King Gambit. Uh, we have Roaring Moon. We have Tyranitar, Wo Chen, Cope, Ting Lu. It's, it's hard to want to double down on these types when there are Pokemon running around running low kick. We see low kick on King Gambit. We see uh, Pokemon running around, you know, using close combat from time to time. Um, not close combat, what am I saying? I'm, I'm thinking about Iron Hand specifically. We have like Iron Hands using like Drain Punch that can like beat all of them. Uh, and especially we have Fairy types running around, specifically Fluttermane, the single most used Pokemon in the format. It's able to hit a lot of things for super effective damage, but notably dark types are a type that you have to be really careful when you're doubling down on. So in like, as far as like tournament usage went, while on, sh on you know, Showdown and Picolytics, I don't think this is necessarily reflected in like the overall data. Um, 
Klefki did actually see like a really decent rise in usage towards the end of series two and at the beginning of series one, because Klefki can do what Grimstar wants to do without having to double down on that dark type weakness. It does have access to dual screens in like reflect and light screen. It has access to thunder wave and it's like move that it usually runs is just like dazzling gleam. So yeah, it's, it's basically just like if you're going to go for the dual screen support set, you go for Klefki. And if you want to go for like fake out, you go Grimstarl. So like that's a big reason Grimstarl sort of fell off. So Grimstarl is going to sit at number five, not number five, number four for me. Number three um, is one that a lot of people are, are I'm, I'm having trouble ordering this, to be honest, because like the top three, I know it's going to be number one, but it's like it's number three and number two can be sort of interchanged. And this one's going to come as a surprise, but Aspothra saw usage for a little bit and then fell off. Why don't we really see Aspothra anymore? Well, let me explain what Aspothra did. Aspothra would pair itself with Sandy Shocks, right? It would pair itself with Sandy Shocks and Sandy Shocks would run booster energy and it would run gravity and that would make it so turn one, it would outspeed Aspothra. Uh, and it would get the gravity off, making it so everything would have, it, it would have a 100% chance to land Hypnosis, basically. And Aspothra also had access to Speed Boost as its ability, so the next turn you would throw off just 100, you would just like throw off like really fast 100% accurate Hypnosises. Uh, and it also had access to the move Lumina Crash, which is a really strong move. It is 80 base power psychic move, 100% chance to lower the target special defense by two stages. When you combine that with Sandy Shocks, that now has a 100% accurate gravity uh, thunder and earth power, nothing, there are no like immunities to earth power anymore. And you would just like run protect as the last move usually, maybe Volt Switch. Uh, yeah, so Sandy Shocks, Espathro was like the duo that you would see run this. Like it was, it was good. You could make the argument that Sandy Shocks fell off. I think that it might come back personally. There's a lot of really good water Terras and like, fire terras running around so and steel terras i think sandy shocks will come back personally but Aspathra is like the part of this team that cannot function without sandy shocks in my opinion uh so because of that i, I have to give it to Aspathra. so yeah Aspathra was good uh we saw it placed decently well at a few tournaments it never really got super super high um in like top cut or anything but it would always run just like this one set it would be like hypnosis lumina crash protect and what was that last move I forget what the last move would usually be, but I remember there was one that really stood out to me. It was Pounce Aspathra, because Pounce, while it didn't deal damage, was actually like a really good speed control move, because you could make it so like, oh, you have the Sandy Shocks next to you, right? You have Sandy Shocks, and it's speed boosted, but now you're facing off against an Iron Bundle that's speed boosted. Well, Aspathra could protect at, on like turn two, and then the next turn it would go for like a pounce into the iron bundle, and then Sandy Shocks would pick up the KO with like a thunder or whatever, or like an earth power because it has low special defense. And it would it would just be like a useful tool in that sense. Or like for booster energy Fluttermain too, some of them would run that to speed boost. It would make it so you could lower the speed so Sandy Shocks would pick up the KO. It's a really useful tool in a Spothra. So this set became somewhat popular. I think they tended to run Focus Sash, sometimes they don't, and they would just like you could make it bulky, obviously, but like a lot of them just didn't really care. They would just do that. Uh, and usually it'd be either... I, I remember seeing... Um, actually, I think it was like Covert Cloak on this guy. And then it was like Terra Ghost on the Sandy Shocks to make sure you always got it off. You don't have to worry about like um, fake out or anything. And the defensive Terra on a spot throw would usually be Terra Fairy. Just because it synergizes well with Psychic. You don't have to worry about like super effective sucker punches. Uh, ghost moves become neutral. Bug moves are resisted. It's a really nice defensive terror for Psychic. So yeah, uh, a Spothra would do that. It would just, it was really annoying because it would just sleep everything. And it was a very strong Pokemon. And then Sandy Shocks pick up KOs. So yeah, a Spothra no longer really gets to do that because uh, I think the thing that made a Spothra Sandy Shocks less useful was we saw the rise of Lumberry Dragonite towards the middle of series two. Uh, and that was like just like something that nullified this entire strategy. Uh, it didn't do too well into King Gambit teams. While King Gambit would take a lot of damage from Earth Power, it was immune to um, Aspothra's attack, uh, Lumina Crash. So if you were to Rage Powder away like the, the hit, King Gambit could just go for like an Iron Head onto Aspothra and that would use the KO because it doesn't have good bulk. Um, and it would usually want to tear a fairy because it doesn't want to take super effective from Sucker Punch or like Kowtow Cleave. So that was like really big. 
uh, what else was like causing it to fall off? I guess now we don't really see it too much because of all of like the really, really good dark types. I think specifically one that really nullifies it is actually Ting Lu. Ting Lu absolutely like it, it just, it makes the combination of Sandy Shocks and Spothra just, it doesn't do anything to it. Yeah, you can put Ting Lu to sleep, but you're lowering everything special attack stat by 275%. Sandy Shocks doesn't have anything to hit Ting Lu with, especially not the Assault Vest set. A Spothra can't lower your special defense because you're immune to Lumina Crash. And the, like they, the, all they can do is like constantly hypnosis you, and it's, it's not really worth it. So yeah, I think just like the the onset of really fast booster energy mons, um, Talonflame picking up towards the middle of Series 2, and just all of the ruins running in all at once, becoming immune to... Uh, this thing's strongest move just made it so they yeah, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Actually, wait, I forget. Does hypnosis hit dark types? I might be I might be tripping there. I always forget this interaction and I really should. Uh, I'm going to hold on before I make a fool of myself. Yes, hypnosis does hit dark types. I, I don't know why I had to like double check. I always forget, but I'm certain. I'm certain I have been hit by hypnosis on a dark type. Okay. I just, I, cause it's a psychic move, but it's like a status. So it doesn't really care. I don't know. I always forget. All right. Yeah. I, I just, I just forget about that. Okay. Moving on from my brain fart. Um, next up is actually going to be Salamence. Salamence, despite being a really good intimidator, despite being like a solid Pokemon that I believe it was Jody's team with like Palafin Salamence did really well at San Diego regionals. Um, Despite being like a really strong Pokemon with access to Intimidate, 100% accurate Hurricane in the Rain, Draco Meteor, Tailwind, just a lot of really good tools. And also like Terra steals like a really good defensive Terra on it. Um, despite all of those tools being in this thing's pocket, it fell off. And I, it's, it's very difficult to explain why Salamence is just definitively like a worse Dragon type in most situations compared to Dragonite. Um, but I'll, I'll try to do it. So the reason that people started using Dragonite over Salamence initially wasn't because it was Intimidate immune. Actually, it's because of multi-scale. So Salamence, while it could burn a Terra to live a hit and then get off like a Tailwind or whatever, Dragonite didn't really need to do that. And it had like a lot of really good Terra types. So like you would see like Assault Vest, multi-scale Dragonite with like Terra flying, um, and it would run like extreme speed, Terra Blast, low kick, and like Outrage was like a set that people ran for a while. Or no, Outrage was only on like Banded Dragonite. What was like the dragon move people ran in this? I don't even think they ran a dragon move sometimes. Uh, Ice Spinner, sorry. It was Ice Spinner that they would run. This was like mid series two. And you would basically just make sure that you're like fat. Like you would just do like this. 236 usually, I think that's like the jump right yeah 201 i don't know you would hit you would hit the jump in like your stat right there 204 you'd max out your hp and you'd just be like a really fat dragonite um and it was more consistent into a lot of different things despite being weak to iron bundle ice moves you were always able to terra flying and then with like assault vest and multi-skill hit it with a terra blast and then pick up the ko with extreme speed despite being weak to Flutter main moves, you could just Terra Flying and Terra Blast it. Uh, it also did much better into the Indeedy Armor Rouge leads because Indeedy Female plus Armor Rouge was a, a combination that people tended to run. You would literally just like, you would uh, you would Ice Spinner turn one versus Indeedy, take like no damage from any attack they might go for. And then under Trick Room, even with Psychic Train Up, you would just remove the Psychic Train with the Ice Spinner and then Extreme Speed everything under Trick Room to prevent it from being like annoying. Dragonite just, it is it is a Swiss army knife of a Pokemon where Salamence does like two things. It is an offensive Intimidate Tailwind Pokemon. So Intimidate Tailwind, very nice. Dragonite just matches up into a lot more things. And it was also able to take on King Gambit. So King Gambit was a very, was a, a very strong Pokemon that we saw. And while Salamence could run Earthquake to deal with it, it wasn't really worth running on Salamence uh, because you had other moves you wanted to run. For example, Tailwind, uh, Dual Wing Beat sometimes, Hurricane or Draco Meteor, depending on like what set you were running, if you were physically offensive or specially offensive. Uh, where Dragonite into King Gambit, you don't give it a Defiant Boost with Intimidate. 
and you're able to go for low kick onto it to one shot. And yes, they would go for Terra flying a lot of the time, which is why you also ran Ice Spinner. So you would just beat that very important Pokemon. And yeah, it just, even nowadays, we still see Dragonite because it matches up so well into a lot of things. Uh, you Terra Blast Aboongus. You can eat a hit from Chiyu and Terra Blast it. It's run next to Chen Pao, but now they actually run Terra Normal more than anything uh, because it makes it so you can go for really, really powerful extreme speeds. In the Palafin, you resist all of its hits and you're able to hit it with, you know, a Terra Blast Flying or just extreme speed spam versus it. Yeah, it just it just does super well nowadays. Uh, and it's, it's a really reliable Pokemon. So... Yeah, basically just Salamence couldn't compete with that. It gave Defiant to King Gambit, to Annihilate. Uh, while it does do better into Great Tusk, arguably, because it has Intimidate and stuff, uh, the utility wasn't enough to offset that. And yes, Salamence is still usable. I have used it recently. Uh, it's just that Dragonite, you, it, it tends to be better. So that's why nine times out of ten, Salamence is going to be dropped for Dragonite. Even on rain teams, like, Salamence was run on, like, the original version of a lot of rain teams in Series 1, and now it's just, it's Dragonite. The final Pokemon, the one that fell off the absolute hardest, the one that is at the bottom of a canyon, begging for help, saying, please, let me out of my usage canyon, uh, it's Miascarada. Miascarada used to be everywhere, dude. This Pokemon was crazy. It ran a lot of different sets. One of my favorites was actually the... Uh, Sucker Punch, Flower Trick, U-Turn, Trick Room set. Uh, and the reason that you would run Trick Room on it is because in a lot of situations, Miascarada in Series 1 would be the fastest thing on the field. It had 123 speed, which is really fast, before we had Iron Bundle at 136 and Fluttermane at 135. Those two Pokemon are why Miascarada isn't used, by the way. That, that it's, it's those two specifically. But uh, for the time, Miascarada was the fastest thing ever. So if you had, like, a Torkoal in the back, you know, Miascarada could threaten to Flower Trick the water types that would beat Torkoal. Like, it would Flower Trick Palafin. Uh, it was also a 100% check to Don Dozo because Flower Trick bypasses accuracy checks and it always results in a critical hit so you ignore Dondosa's plus two defenses and it would very cleanly two shot it most of the time even choice band Mascarada, that was a guaranteed one shot in a lot of Dondozo. but yeah trick room was really nice because you could threaten the water types that beat Torkoal and then you would trick room and then Torkoal would get in and then you would just do all that uh, it also just had access to Protean, which is really good. You would get Stab on all of your moves, and then Choice Band Meowscarado would actually go ahead and drop U-Turn uh, for a move like Knock Off or even Low Kick at times. It had a lot of really cool things that it could do. Play Rough was also very good. You could turn into a Fairy type, and then you resist fighting moves. Uh, so yeah, Meowscarado saw usage because it was, it was that guy. It would hit everything. Uh, it was basically just like modern-day Cinderace, but maybe not quite as strong. Uh, but yeah, so Miascarada saw usage because it dealt with literally everything in the metagame. Uh, you would see opposing Palafin, you would Flower Trick it, you would see Dondozo, you would Flower Trick it. Uh, what else was ran at the beginning of the game? Um, Kid Gambit got low kicked, Tyranitar didn't see too much usage, but it got low kicked. Garganical was something that saw a ton of usage at the beginning of the game. Flower Trick just one shot it. Yeah, you basically just hit everything. And now... The speed tier is much higher. If we look at VGC 2023 Regulation C, the maximum speed tier, or like the average speed tier you can expect to see on a team, the average highest thing is going to be like 135, 136. Like these Pokemon, they were legal beforehand, but you didn't see them that often. But now Chen Pao exists, Iron Bundle exists, uh, Fluttermane exists, and Talonflame actually did pick up in usage towards the end of, um, or towards the beginning of Series 2. So because of that, um, it, just, it just fell off. As soon as... A ton of Pokemon that all one-shot it showed up. Who would have thought? As soon as a ton of Pokemon that could one-shot Meowscarada and outspeed it showed up into the game, Meowscarada stopped being used. Isn't that crazy? It's still obviously like a useful Pokemon. You could still make it work. It has a lot of valuable tools that are like very nice for a team. But it just does, it's not spammable anymore. It, I think it used to be top 10 usage or something like that. But yeah, nowadays Meowscarada sees virtually no usage. If we go into here and we just try to look it up. Miascarada at 0.72% usage, which let's see what Pokemon it's hanging out with down there. 0.72, that is going to be Sableye and Doxbun. Those are its friends. Klefki, a little too low for how good it is, in my opinion. But yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. I just want to talk about five Pokemon that fell off that we just don't see anymore and explain why we don't see them anymore. So yeah, if you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications. If you learn anything new, you know, just I make these videos all the time. So subscribe for that. See you in the next one. Goodbye.